Soldar direction, battles on the southern flank of Bakhmut. The intensity of fighting along almost the entire front has decreased due to worsening weather conditions. Nevertheless, positional battles and local attempts at sorties remained, including at Bakhmut. The command of the Ukrainian Soldar Group expects the activation of the Russian armed forces in the Kleshchivka and Krasny directions. According to the AFU, Russian troops intend to occupy the heights adjacent to the villages, which, in principle, fits into the logic. Because of such fears, the forces of the 23rd Battalion of the 1st Presidential Brigade were transferred to Krasny to help the 57th Rifle Battalion. And immediately upon arrival, the assault group of this formation tried to attack to the southeast, but to no avail. Strengthening in this area is due to the deterioration of morale in 57 OSB and general losses in manpower in various Ukrainian brigades during repeated attacks, the results of which are insignificant in comparison with the price. The movement of the 515th Separate Battalion of the 1st Separate Special Forces Brigade from the Kharkov region is also being completed in Chase of Yar. The special unit will replace the 77th Brigade, which will go to restore its combat capability. A similar replenishment of supplies was carried out in the 80th Air Assault Brigade of the Ukrainian Air Force. It is not yet possible to completely replace it, so 290 mobilized civilians were sent to its composition. Kursen Direction Attempts of Ukrainian Marines to Take Over Landings at Kronoki Yesterday, right before a strong storm that affected several regions in southern Russia, Ukrainian marines tried to again wedge themselves into the forest belt in the central part of Kronoki. Two assault groups of the 2nd Battalion of the 38th Infantry Brigade of the Ukrainian Navy secured a foothold south of the small forest and began to equip positions there. As a result of RF artillery fire and the subsequent sortie of the reconnaissance group, the AFU suffered losses and retreated to reserve positions to the west. At the same time, east of the small forest near the greenhouses, the assault group of the 36th Marine Brigade occupied a stronghold, where they immediately came under fire. On the night of November 27th, during a storm, the wounded and dead were evacuated to Frolov Island. Nevertheless, taking advantage of bad weather conditions and low visibility, separate units of the Ukrainian Navy are trying to hold the lines in the forest belt adjacent to Krinky. Copters with a grenade drop system and ammunition were sent there to strengthen the lines. Rotation and replenishment of supplies have been established which allows AFU to maintain a bridgehead in the village and try to gain a foothold in the forest, but without success due to a change in the tactics of AFU command. However, as the soil freezes, activity will likely increase, and not only in this area. This is indicated by today's sortie of Marines in the Poima area, which was quickly repulsed by artillery fire. Vrimaevsky Sector advance of the 394th Regiment near Staromayersky. After a relative calm, soldiers of the 394th Motorized Rifle Regiment of the 127th Motorized Rifle Division resumed the assault on the landings at the Pryetno Staromayersko line. According to Voin DV Telegram Channel, as a result of a daring attack, Russian military personnel managed to drive units of the Ukrainian armed forces into a stronghold and subsequently clear it from the AFU. Thanks to this, units of the Russian army occupied more advantageous positions, advancing from the Grasheva beam to Staromayersky, where detachments of the 128th Terrestrial Defense Brigade settled. Against this background, the forces of the 175th Battalion of the 121st Tiaro, including the ATGM crew, were transferred to the northwestern outskirts of the settlement. Previously, the formation operated in the Kursen direction, and the personnel were trained to conduct assault operations. In the Starobelsky direction in the Kapiansky sector there are battles in the direction of Sinkovka. However, 
there are no changes on the front line. Similarly, positional clashes continue on the Tor salient. In the Donetsk direction, in the area of the Avdivsky fortified area, positional combat operations are taking place. On the northern flank, on the approaches to Novo Kalinovo, the Ukrainian armed forces hold positions in forest belts, making up for losses with fresh supplies of manpower from the defense units. To the east of AKHZ, units of the Russian armed forces occupied the territory of the pumping station. At the same time, in the area of Stepova Petrovsky, the advanced detachments of the Russian army retreated closer to the railway, since further presence in the destroyed settlement promised large losses of personnel and equipment. On the southern flank, in the area of the Yasinovad industrial zone, the Russian armed forces are strengthening their positions, preparing for an offensive. If you again tried to attack in the direction of Gorlovka, the Ukrainian armed forces are conducting an offensive in the area of waste heaps west of Mayersk, trying to gain a foothold in the gray zone, and there are oncoming battles. In the Orkovsky sector, the Ukrainian armed forces once again attack the positions of Russian troops west of Rabatino and towards Novoprokopovka. During the clashes, a few used several pieces of heavy equipment, but ultimately was unable to achieve success.